Hello everyone, welcome to more Face It action and we've got a real treat for you in this one. It's going to be TSM versus FMTL, one of the more interesting games for round four against two pretty competitive teams who, who both ultimately had a very disappointing stage two in OWCS and we'll be looking for redemption here. A few changes to both rosters, we're going to have Magic Mateball coming for opener on the TSM side. Obviously for those who don't know, it's the old timeless roster plus Magic Mateball instead of opener. Meanwhile on the FMCL, FMCL side, they also made a change. They're going to have Admiral win instead of Wimone. So they've had to remove Wimone because of the import slot. They wanted Admiral win instead on support to partner up with Renko. And it means Zero is going to become basically the full time flex DPS and no longer be sharing time with Wimone. So changes on both sides, a look at both of these new teams. And I think, especially when you think how North America looks right now in terms of power ranking, there's Toronto at the top, then M80, and then there's a really open open for third spot and i think when you look at a lot of these teams you look at tsm fmcl luminosity students of the game even someone like pip all competing for this third spot citrus nation as well of course all competing for this third spot especially when you factor in that the number of esports world cup spots available in this face of tournament are free this is going to be a really important game not so much in terms of qualification we expect both teams to make it out of a round robin but in terms of relative power level between two of these competitive teams. Now, we can also talk a little bit about the maps and the bands because it's going to be a very similar band system that we've seen in OWCS. We're only going to play uh, best of three, so first to two, and it's going to be control, hybrid, escort every single time. I'll walk you through the bands. I, I can't show you the page because obviously if I show you the page, it contains spoilers, so I'll try and keep it spoiler-free if no one's seen the result yet. But the way it started is FMCL banned Busan, TSM banned Oasis, and then FMCL picked Nepal. Then for hybrid, TSM pick, uh, sorry, TSM banned Midtown, FMCL picked Hollywood, and then Parisio was the pick by TSM. So again, seeming to push towards some kind of dive matchup there is what we normally see on Parisio, which is an interesting choice. And honestly, one I don't think they feel too uncomfortable with FMCL, but we'll wait and see. FMCL banned Junkertown, TSM banned Shambhali, and then Route 66 was picked by FMCL. So we have our maps if we need all three of them, and we can jump right into the series right now. So if I take you over here, Obviously, one thing to bear in mind is that they're currently listed as T still on Face It without the official logo, so it's going to be T instead of TSM. But I'm I'm sure everyone can. You, you you're a smart group. I think you can figure it out. We're going to be starting on the Pool Sanctum, which is one of the more unique maps. And this was obviously FMCL's pick as well. So we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see what we get out of both teams here. Sigma are a very viable option uh, because of how slow the map is. Also. Ran pretty good into Sigma as well. So we've got a situation now where Icy is out. He is on Sigma. They've got Ash. They've got Kiri. They've got Lucio. So in general, a much slower version of a comp from TSM already. This kind of puts the impetus on FMCL to try and make something happen. So far, Rocket's actually just wide open. But Seeker's marking that side. Interesting decision here from FMCL. They overload for front here with Zera, leaving the flank wide open, but Seeker's watching it. Hits for Rail. Works out really nicely, but we have to get first cap off that. Now it's free for Admiral to go force it with Seeker. They'll do exactly that. They'll get themselves a cap. Rocket's going to come mirror onto point now, but Admiral is marking it. Zera again continuing to play aggressive with Aerial here, actually. Now he's going to dive over to point. Rocket is matching it. Bit of help now from Maple, but Maple takes a bit of a rail as Aerial pressures the front as well. And it's Maple who actually falls. Admiral and Zero can blind for that one. And now, well, Zero for a second, Zero could push Rocket, but Chopper's got him covered. So now 4v4. Admiral still trying to hold point. Rico is forced out of Rocket. This will surely force him away. Admiral finishes the kill. He dies, though. But point will stay in control of FMCL. Chopper's trying to make that move. The rest of FMCL have to disengage this Kitsune Rush. Aerial is still fighting on it. He's going to get lamped, but he needs so much help. Rocks out of it by Icy, and he will be finished for there. And the faster ultimates there end up being the swing factor and that Kiri ult just not possible for Aerial to get out of now. Obviously no speed as Admiral died a bit earlier in the fight. And only 29% given up which really isn't too bad on Nepal Sanctum. It can often be a lot, of a, a lot slower for some of these retakes and flips back the other way. FMCL's chance now to be aggressive. They can use Window to potentially force point here. We see Renko holding this on the right hand side. We'll catch a Dynamite. Has to try and pocket his ram out here. He's got awfully deep. Seeker's going to use the overclock to force point as well. 
If they do clean it up, they should be able to keep everyone alive. I don't know why Ice committed the Flux, actually. It was a very ambitious one. Seeker had done all the work on the point with that Overclock. And ultimately, yeah, Seeker kind of had that fight in the bag. So it feels a little bit... Uh, a bit of a shame to use the window as well, but the fact that I see use the flux really balances that one out. So quick retakes on both sides of things. A little bit uncommon here. Now Annihilation and B available for FMCL to be aggressive with here. So Ice is going to be very careful in this walk up. They're going to bob through actually. Ariel's going to maybe drop this Annihilation. Tries to just disengage and again Seeker finds the headshot. Shut down on point. FMCL in control. Now they can disengage this bob. Repush at their leisure. Ariel looking back for the walk-up. Zero's going to come from the other side as well. Pressure onto Icy. Zero's dodged this rock and Ariel has pushed TSM all the way back into this choke point. Boop over the top. Pogs ball in the back as well. Nice from Zero. And now the Annihilation. Ariel wants to finish it right here, right now. But they, they're kind of already gone, aren't they? They're going to be able to get one kill. They might, If they can get the staggers here, it'll, it'll maybe just about end up being worth it. The touch is now going to be horrendous for them. So even if they have beaten Kitsune Rush, how do you use this if you are... If you are TSM. Rocket's going to try and go through this left-hand side. Is he going all the way around? Or is he just going to try and go through point? He doesn't have time. He has to go straight to point. Admiral's going to be there. Has to recall. Someone needs to get the next touch now. Will be icy to get the next touch. Pressure now onto Ariel. Admiral still has this beat. Kitsune rush onto him now. And Rocket will help focus him down. Now he'll join on point. Beat will be matched by Maple. Still pushing now. They've actually managed to get a fairly even situation here. Rocket's going to group up on point. Forces his recoil out of zero. Recoil will be done, but it's Seeker again. Seeker's just taken over, and now no recoil for Rocket. We'll see nine for point as well. A difficult series of juggles, but ultimately Seeker's just on top in all of these. That first fight, Seeker finds the pick onto on to Rocket, and then... He finds it on the retake as well. The overclock for the retake. And then he finds another pick in that fight as well. Crucial picks from Seeker across the board. Puts FMCO in a pretty strong position um, in, in Sanctum. They've taken that one. And we'll be moving over to Shrine. Where we might see uh, more similar compositions. I wouldn't be surprised, honestly, if FMCO are going to play a version of this comp essentially everywhere. In the sort of Ram Lucio type comp. And it looks like they might be flexing towards the same the same type of mirror here. Interesting, it might be Kiri from CJ and Sojin from Chopper. As opposed to the back cast now. It's maybe become more common as of late that we're going to get out of FMCL. Both teams running out of high ground. And they'll just trade a bit of spam, trade a bit of damage. Both traces are going to meet each other on point. Nothing all that crucial happening fast. It will be Chopper with a rail if he can find any open connect. Admiral is going to start leaning towards point a little bit to help Zera. Point is about to unlock. And that should cause some, cause some movement. It's going to be a wrap around. Actually, just playing on the stairs here, FMCL. So, slightly worse position. Seeker is going to rotate around. Renko's a little bit slow on the rotate here. And Admiral's actually caught out. Stuck fighting Rocket. Should be okay, but it allows a pressure cycle to come through from TSM. And they bully FMCL out to the choke. So, just a little bit sharper with their movement towards the point there, TSM. They'll get first flip as a result. Hurts to give it away so softly, but now we have Zero chasing out Rocket. Rocket's trying to make an aggressive move, but he will be forced to recall. No recall on Rocket if they can make this next move, but it's just a trade. Window comes through on point, but oh, over disengage looked good for a second, but Ariel was able to find one. And after he goes down, they just both fall, and it'll end up being a straightforward window retake there. Real shame they gave for Flip for free early on, but they salvage it quickly here, FMCL, and put themselves back in control of this point. High noon and beat available. The big difficulty for the for FMCL here is now both support ults are the ones they're going to have to face. Kitsune rush and beat. So they even need to force the Kitsune rush maybe b before the point, then disengage. Or just try and use uh, their beat to try and kill the enemy Lucio. We'll see how they choose to start it here. The typical one would be to start with maybe an overclock on point from Chopper. Maybe uh, Kitsune Rush as well would be reasonable. They've got a decent amount of space on point. And oh, the kill's just there for him. Kitsune Rush has been popped. Now player advantage. High noon coming back around the corner. They're going to beat through as well. But that's easily matched by Maple. They can keep him stuffed at this choke. No chance for Ariel to move through that one. And it'll be easy enough for Chopper and the gang, I think. They lose Rocket again, but it should be difficult to retake this choke. They're getting pocketed there. Annihilation's popped by Ariel. They think they can do it, actually. They've combined onto Chopper. Annihilation will be met here, but suddenly they're being overwhelmed. Ice is getting hit from all sorts of sides. And FMCL, they've muscled their way back up this choke. It looks super high risk from Ariel, but he was able to make it work. 
They combine, they get the kills. Nice play between Ariel and Zira. And now they're in control of point. And we get to last fight territory. And not a whole lot of ults for either team. Pulse bombs a piece. And then Renka will get in his window mid fight. Coming top initially. Zira on this left hand side of his pulse bomb. Rocket just walking with his team for now. Have to be ready to disengage this window if your TSM can't afford to have anyone caught by it. Chance now if they can find for one tap once this window is available. Seeker found a lot of them on the pool sanctum. Could do it the same from him here. For TSM, kind of need... Need to not get caught by this window. I need Rocket to make a play. Rocket makes for play. There goes Renko. No window. That's the exact play they needed. Now they slide in. They're all over Seeker. He gets demolished. Pulse Bomb doesn't redeem it here from Zero, and that's exactly what they needed. TSM's main man has been Rocket for a long time, and he comes up trumps exactly when they need it there as well. You couldn't have asked for a bigger combination, so all they had was a Pulse Bomb. Kill the guy with window, deny the window coming out, and maybe it's given them a chance here, because they're about to have both support ops here, TSM. So as long as they don't get caught by this window high noon again, they should be okay. Coming through top. A slow fight again. Rocket on the right-hand side with Mateball. Renko. Oh, it's going to be Seeker to start it, actually, with High Noon. Forces him out. TSM will disengage it. Don't quite have the Kitsune Rush to re-push, but CJ's about to have that button awfully soon, and he is ready to go. Ariel's already used form as well. They can chase him down. Window back from Renko, but Icy's going to get through it. Lots of pressure. Now B comes through. CJ will die. Maple only gets free in the beat. They're still all over him. Chopper on the high ground. Admiral's trying to deal with him, but he is low. Admiral's got it. Bit of help from Renko, and Renko's got the pocket on Admiral. Renko and Admiral are keeping each other alive. Great pocket from Renko in the end. They managed to stabilize and FMCL will be taking this first map here. 2-0 as well, convincing from them in the end. We'll move on to Parisio next, which is a very different type of map. We expect dive here from both teams. Initially, this was obviously actually TSM's pick. And I think the big logic here is one of the weak points in Ariel's Hero Pool is obviously an inability to play... Not an inability to play Winston, but he's certainly weaker on the Winston compared to the more traditional off-tank roles. So as such, they're pretty keen to put him into a situation where they either have to play a very different type of comp or they force him into Winston. So he doesn't want to take the Winston mirror versus Riker, which is pretty reasonable. Instead, though, what we're going to see is a Diva Bat Brig. So a very different type of solution here for FMCL if they stick on this. Seeker's going to take the Grapple Shot out of Spawn. And we'll see. Nothing to look at. Nothing to look at. And now there's a big onus here, obviously, on CJ. His ability to Fred nades through this matrix. Likewise, also worth noting, Sionjun has actually come in and will be playing Tracer. Chopper obviously remains on the hit scan. So no rocket in, which potentially means we might see an echo at some point from Sionjun. That would be my expectation with Rocket being taken out here. There is a big nade initially as they try and walk underneath. So first nade finds its way through for CJ. They're going to try and walk underneath as well. It's a tricky one. They'll try and clear top as they walk here. Ariel's taking so much damage. And they'll actually lose Ariel's mech before anything happens now. Zero is behind and dealing with a point. But I think Sionjun is actually chasing him out. Can Zero get, Zero get out here? He's going to get pincered. Can he try and blink all the way out? He's got enough blinks. He's got enough blinks. He's managed to stabilize, and now we'll see TSM continuing to try hold on to this high ground. But this is a nice position for him to be in. This first choke is so difficult to walk through. CJ's going to get nade opportunities as they come through here. Easy pocket onto everyone. And I don't know if they're just going to slow it down a little bit, wait for their window even or something. They're trying to rotate through now, trying to find that window through Matrix here. Ariel has to be so alert to all these different threats. They're trying to go the other way here. Ariel's got his eyes locked firmly on that. Anna eats the nade this time, though. Will be okay, but Riker is still putting a lot of pressure. He's going to get the nano on as well, but... Oh, they've made themselves scarce. Can they live here? Renko, no! Riker's just about able to touch him. Will be able to regroup with his team now. And again, the hold looks good for TSM. No trades either, and this is now where they're going to start getting to some of these scarier ults. They've struggled a lot with this rotation so far, FMCO, and you can only imagine they're going to struggle a little bit more if they're going to have to do it versus a primal as well. Going to make it a lot harder for Ariel to eat the nade. 
They've also got a rally coming up from Maple as well. I don't know exactly how you take this for your FMCL. You maybe need a more aggressive... You need to swing with window quite aggressively just to get through this choke, I think. It's going to be... Renko actually lurking quite far back here. They're just trying to walk with Seeker right now. They'll get Zero through. Seeker's getting full pocket. Nade does connect onto Seeker and Renko. But Riker wasn't in a position to follow. And Zero and Ariel can now clear this Winston. They've avoided the first nade. They still need to clear directly above them right now. Pressure onto the Ana. CJ will be forced all the way out. Riker's going to drop and bubble. But it does mean Sionchen is behind. 86%. Regroup onto high ground here. For TSM. CJ is with them now again. Diva Bomb coming in. Ma Rally was used, but it's not enough to save Chopper. Window from the other side now as well. Um, bombs all over the place from FMCL. They might, maybe, maybe, maybe just about found the breakthrough. There's still... Oh, they actually rally for it as well. They still lose Renko despite the rally. I think they're worried about the trades. Riker has this primal. He's going to pop it. He's going to chase down Zera. Riker just needs to live with this primal now. Focus on getting as many touches as he can. Chopper and Maple will be there soon. They swing out with High Noon. Ariel is able to mark it, but he has to be careful not to get caught. Doesn't take any damage from it. But now TSM with a little bit more space on point. Only 40 seconds left as Ariel continues to try and box him in. Seonjin back on the Genji, but the High Noon from Seeker. Renko is body blocking on the Kiri. Ariel's got a bit of Matrix for him as well. Big chunk of damage onto Riker here. He's got the Nano, so he's still okay, but he needs more healing. He's desperate for more healing. He's trying to pocket him. Ariel was able to chase down that kill, though. Tank advantage. They dash out. Need this kill on Seeker right now if you're Seonjin, but Renko's good with a Suzu. He keeps his boy up. An FMCL. We'll be able to clean this one. And it takes the most of a time bank. It takes the most of a time bank if we're being honest. But they get it. And ultimately, this second point is also very high ground, low ground orientated. But I think at least with a bat brig now, there's more options to get the cart maybe to this area. Take your whole team up here. And then try and do like an aggressive window out here or high noon to get a little bit of space. Clear these areas and just go into a forced cart fight. I think it's actually easier on second. Even though you still have a lot of the same problems with high ground. No ultimates just yet either. Nade will come in initially from CJ. Doesn't find anything though. Cart will just be moved slowly and steadily here by FMCL. Everyone needs a bit of help here. Riker's actually even dropped with bubble to try and block it. They're focused on denying the car right now. So Ariel's going to come. Admiral's going to come. Boop actually doesn't quite deny the jump. But Riker's taking loads of damage. Ariel wants to push it as well. Riker's in huge trouble. The sleep dart's perfect from CJ. Just about getting Riker out. But he's used all these cooldowns defensively for this now. Now we're going to Kitsune Rush to keep forcing point. Magic Maple's maybe in a precarious situation. Has to get back to his team there. Now the pressure on. He's going to rally deal with Ariel. Obviously... Rally and Brig, very hard for a Diva to deal with, but Admiral's got the Rally going back. They've chased out Maple, and they've got this Cart C90 the entire time. The bomb will go. They avoid it. CJ nearly has this Nano. Riker's going to jump onto point. High noon swing from Chopper from main as well will slow him down. Buy CJ time to get this Nano. Has to drop it onto Riker as he's pulse bombed. Riker's going to have this Primal as well, so there's a lot to do. The Zero's harassing him from the back, but Riker's found damage with a dive. He's killed Admiral. Ariel and Zero are trying to trade as well. Maple's under big pressure, but CJ's good with a defensive nade. Riker and Chopper now pushing forward. They need to deny the point. Somehow, someway, TSM have stabilized. And they should be able to chase out these remaining kills. Important, important peel from CJ in a lot of those situations. It felt like there was maybe a moment where there was a decision to go one way, but a decision also to clear behind from FMCL that they didn't quite get right. A few people doing different things. But ultimately, they just about bought enough time to get all of their ultimates there. They didn't over panic and rush. Now 30 seconds left on the clock. No real ultimates to go with this rotation. Riker does have his primal. He's got the backline here. He's going to bubble them in. Separates for D.Va though. And that's their real focus. Riker didn't want to commit and go for kills. But he just wanted to bubble up for D.Va. And Ariel was... Just about... How has he kept Mech there? Now going again. But Nade's big this time from CJ. Wants to get the kills. Needs to finish this cast. Riker will get him. We're into overtime now. Any more kills will be perfect. Looking for this Brig. Still looking for this Brig. He's pulled all the heals backwards. We'll bubble off Ariel now as well. They're desperate for another touch. Can Ariel get it? Does manage to get it. But he's just going to get beamed down. Easy for Riker now. Complete control of everything. Zero actually trades one. Kitsune Rush comes out. It's not quite over yet. But the rally should seal the deal now. Zero's in one more time. 
rally on point from Maple should be enough. And 120 meters, 60 centimeters. Not that far overall. Parisio is a map where we see teams defend successfully at all different points, especially in that second bit where they were ultimately held fair. But so far, it does feel like TSM are in control of this matchup. It feels like CJ's playing really well. Hitting the 80 needs to hit, keeping people up. Riker's found good value with what you'd expect him to in terms of... The na I think every nano, every, every primal... Maybe except for Primal on first, where he had to use it to live, I think, when he was here and jumped out here. But all the Primals he was actually used to engage with and all the Nanos he was able to use to engage with, actually, I think he turned a kill in all of them. And if you're able to do that against a Bat Brig type of comp, you're going to feel very good. Now, interesting decision from FMCL to not continue to lead into the Bat Brig. We go over to Anna Brig Winston. Now, this is one where you... This is what we talk about a little bit at the start of the series, where we, we clearly thought that... This is not a favourable matchup for Ariel. And this is not a situation I think FMCL necessarily want to put Ariel in. But maybe they feel they just have no choice on this map. There's a few maps in, in a game like Overwatch, like Gibraltar and Dorado especially, where a certain style of composition is believed to be the strongest or necessary in a lot of, in a lot of situations, especially in those maps where it's so Winston orientated. But we do see... Evolutions and developments here. We think of uh, the Diva Echo Widow comp that Florida and a lot of other teams copied to start doing on Dorado. I think there's probably versions of it you can try and work around here. So I'm skeptical of FMCL's decision to opt into a straight mirror here. We'll see how it pans out for them. Will be Echo Cass on the attack here. I swapped him for no tracer on the attack. So Yonjin is going to take a lot of damage initially obviously echo is tricky into cast because the cast is very happy very happy to try and pluck that one out but sionjin's actually the one who gets the earlier pick onto admiral don't know how they've negotiated that one no nade or anything and fmcl are going for an aggressive aid in return cj has been naded but there's no follow-up sleep is good and seeker will finish that one off midair renko and seeker trying to do it all themselves ariel's trying to group with them but cj's pushed up he's found the nade didn't see exactly what happened to Admiral there, but just a very soft death to give away. Admiral is now back on Lucio. Admiral is now back in the respawn queue. And the retake is still possible. We can see Zero behind here. Ariel coming back. Renko and Seeker. They're going to have to make it work without Admiral. Spawn now on Lucio, so we'll be with them relatively shortly. But Maple and CJ have uh, the strong position here on the high ground. Chopper's even got a more aggressive angle. Seeker's going to peek out. Actually, Seeker catches him here. Aerial is super low, so he does get traded. Chance to tiptoe onto point here, but Zira needs help. So they're chasing down Riker. But Seeker wants to push the back line. The late connected. Can Seeker get any more? Maple's low. CJ keeps him up for now. They're also low. Nano onto Riker. Might push him over the edge. They're all over Seeker. Seeker is desperate for help. Sionjin might be able to clean him up. But no, Nano wants a Seeker. Seeker forces a copy. He's naded again. Riker's going to be slept here. Sionjin, Primal comes out. They're throwing everything at him. Seeker's trying to take down CJ. He's so low. Of a sleep from CJ. Keeps himself alive. Somehow, someway, the counter Nano now onto Chopper should seal it up. And, oh, Seeker did so much. If he hits about four more shots there, maybe they actually are able to clutch it. It was asked a lot, but he, he made it happen. They were so close to dying as well. But CJ, the perfect sleep to save his life there. Just gave gave Seeker a bit of a shimmy to miss a couple of those shots. Looks good on the defense. Looks good on the attack. Now a chance to take fair high ground. And this, this is ultimately the best part of a map to defend if you're on this Anna Brig type composition. Exactly, exactly where FMCO are now. With the, Winston, the Tracer anchor in point and the Winston marking this top high ground. Very difficult to break this hold. Really, you have to either rely on a mistake or some kind of negotiate some sort of favorable ult situation. As far as ults are concerned, because Admiral was swapping back and forth, he's way behind on this rally compared to CJ. So a chance to rotate aggressively if they want. But so far, they're just trying to force their way through the carts. Yunjun taking this coast angle might even go for a bit of a dive behind. Will be forced all the way out. Now coming in, he gets for Nano, but gets naded as he comes through. Bubble to play in from Riker, but the backline's been completely contained here by Ariel. So they're going to survive this Nano with relatively little peril, but they have lost for high ground here, which might cause them some prob problems long term. 
Renko, you can see, already keen to rotate up these stairs. Admiral has stayed main. Seeker is aggressive on the other high ground, but Renko is now in trouble. Hits for sleep, though. Will be okay. Seeker needs a lot of help. They drop a Nano onto him. Siunchen with the copy, but Nano Kaz beats Copy Kaz. They still lose Renko, but Seeker is pushing the back line. Any kill is good. Magnetic Grenade all the way down. They managed to get all the way out here, actually. Ariel was asleep. Was primal though, so we'll be able to stabilize and get back to the high ground. It was a lot of time they had on second here, and they've taken a decent chunk out of it here, FMCL. Rally now available for Admiral. The only real ult on the board. There will be a high noon from Chopper, but it should be relatively easy enough to disengage. Looks like Chopper might just try and come through this uh, near window. No, maybe it's going the other way. Dipping back and forth. Bubble will be traded from Riker. Now the bubble comes out the other way. Zero's trying to keep this lock on Chopper. But now without the bubble, maybe Chopper can swing. Seekers is actually on the high ground, so a slightly worse position. Maple crosses to the other side. They've negotiated some space for themselves here, FMCL. And we get the bubble onto Ariel, so FMCL going to have to concede loads more of this space. Meanwhile, Zero might be stuck in very aggressively. Has to be careful. More pressure on him, and it's Seeker who gets caught. Now the rally's going to be put from Admiral to make sure that his backline survives. But no, he can't. Siondrin just kills him through. Ariel's going to try and reset. They have one more... Well, oh, they maybe really don't have one more fight. Zero's going to be able to get the touch. It's going to be a desperate series of touches. Seeker can come back with High Noon. Zero's going to have to recall right now. High Noon will be burst. Sleep onto Seeker. Nat should seal it. Nade onto Maple, but he's back and safe. Admiral's trying to turn it. It's a Lucio copy from Seonjun. And that should push him over the edge. Bubble Lomba point. High Noon from Chopper walking in. Boot back onto Ariel. Nowhere for him to go. C9's on top of all of that. And I think it's fair to say TSM looked better. Uh, better on that map, and we maybe have to come back to a bit of a question of how the draft went in terms of, obviously, obviously FMCL left open Parisio in favour of banning Hollywood. Now, obviously, Hollywood as a map, we could also play Hannah Brig on, but I think it's probably easier to deal with on Hollywood than is Parisio, so potentially, potentially room to have gotten a better draft fair, but maybe they know something about Hollywood that we don't. We'll move on to Route 66 now. This obviously is FMCL's choice, which is interesting because historically Root is also a map where you can play a lot of dive on. And as we saw in Parisio, that was certainly uh, a point of a point of struggle. A point of struggle for FMCL. But it seems like we might just get a pretty standard, pretty standard bat, Lucio, Ram, Sojin com defense coming out here. And at least initially, Icy's in as well. So potentially, they're just going to mirror this as well. So it's actually going to be Icy, Rocket, and Seonjin in, which means no Winston. Obviously, Rocket's going to play Tracer. Seonjin going to be playing, I guess, some of the hit scans. Maybe they want to do Tracer Echo into something, potentially. It's going to be Bat Brig Diva. Hanzo just does Sonic for top. I don't know if Seonjin will really take too much of a step out here. Yeah, she's taking a step out and Storm Arrow top. So. Maybe hands has been factored in. Meanwhile, Rocket and Maple are going to try to push out on this lower side. Dive comes in and they catch Admiral actually here. Just a brawly, super sturdy comp. They deal with everything. Seeker will slide in looking for a desperate trade. A precautionary lamp from CJ. And he's cleaned everyone up. All right, nice, easy, straightforward. Ariel's now going to go Sigma actually. And Zero on to Genji. Siunjin's actually kept this Hanzo. We'll just be sending sending some damage. Spamming the choke. Okay. Alright. Alright. He's killed Admiral. That'll do it. This retake is going to have to wait a little bit for FMCL here. They're going to have to wait for their speedy Estonian to come back one more time, which means TSM can get us into last fight territory. No ults just yet because of the nature of how quickly these fights have been over. They do have complete high ground control now and Icy's going to try and make it difficult for walkout. They want to swing out this right hand side here. Seeker was a little bit split but slides over to his team now. They're going to peek out top right. Ariel's trying to keep point held but oh there's a lot of pressure onto Seeker. Lamb to keep Seeker alive. They force back Icy for now but Ariel has to slow down as well. Zero's trying to clear space on point but he's a little bit separated now. Rocket's... Trying to force him away. Zero super split from his team. And they've not been allowed an inch of space on this first point. Zero's mate trying to make a hero play behind. As is Seeker. They need kills. If they need them quick. But Sionjun has the shutdown on both of them. Renko even dropped the window in. But that one goes absolutely nowhere. And it's about as bad a start as you can 
maybe hopeful. Well, I say, I say hopeful. About, about as bad a start as you can get for FMCL. Overclock coming back for Seeker. A little bit of a weird comp now in between a few different things. I still feel like the Ram would be pretty effective into the Bat Brig. I know it's a bit more difficult. Dragon at the Choke, actually. Tries to boop him in here as Aerial. Yeah, I think the Ram would still be really fine because the Sigma can't contest these high grounds anyway. CJ's going to drop in a super early window and where oh where is Icy going? He's going all the way in. He wants to catch Renko. He will catch Renko. Can he? Oh, it doesn't get the remake actually. So these trades actually are going to work in FMCL's favor and give them a chance to get out on second point here. Icy went so deep for those kills. They drop window. They drop bomb for that as well. Not for biggest ults for the highest value ults that you really want to make sure you convert but still throwing in a couple of ults here just to get the car ultimately just to where they would have got the car anyway so uh, it doesn't feel like a doesn't feel like a worthwhile investment from tsm for that one and now we're gonna have to do this retake from the low ground aerial and rocket starting off forcing the point oh sorry i see and rocket forcing off a point aerial get booped down now another running on top bash onto him have to use the lamp have to beat back but tsm are a step ahead they're already a step back to avoid any value from this beat. Now the car can keep moving. Pulse Bomb. Missed actually there from Rocket. They're holding onto the high grounds here, but now the blade to try and turn it from zero. He's got one slice. He's forced for lamp. Can he find the kill? He just gets one for it. Mate Ball will trade it. And TSM, Magic Mate Ball and CJ are in the trenches a little bit here, but they're keeping this car moving. And they've managed to regroup. Now Rocket is going to get the other side of Aerial in a second here. Try and make his life really hard. He is getting peppered back. Pressure now onto Renko as well. Ariel's trying to matrix him. Renko's going to drop this window and lamp for himself. Icy is all over him. Is super low. Icy will be demet. Can TSM turn the kills here? Rocket's in. Maple's on the angle. Window from the top from CJ. But Ariel's going to flux for it. No, CJ kills him. CJ's got control. Ash now from Sionjin on the way back. And Rocket will start forcing point. Zero's going to play his life. And they will have an attempted retake here. The walk back is along for Icy and Maple. CJ and Sionjin seem pretty content to try and hold for space. Now, Bob nearly available. Rocket's forcing it in. Pulls Ariel, who's now on D.Va himself. Seeker's come out the high ground, but how has CJ just killed Rank over there? CJ getting everyone. All the cleanup kills for him. Maple's going to move to point, and then the D.Va the Diva struggles so much into the brig. So, once Maple's on that point, Ariel's time was always going to be limited. And maybe an overextension at one point on there on the second, but they do decently on the retake. Ariel will be back over to Sigma now. Swapping back and forth. Admiral's going to go Brig as well. So we're actually choosing to mirror ultimately here. Feels like there's a level of uncertainty here from FMCL as they get a Bob in the face as well. They will deal with Bob and push back. Oh, but they've lost Seeker just as he overclocked. It's a huge kill for Sionjin. And now TSM are really putting the pressure on. The car has still got a long way to go. But they are being held basically at the spawn door right now. All the ults favor TSM as well. Rally advantage, bomb, pulse bomb, all available. Zero will try and get out on this right hand side. And Seeker's gone Widow actually. Just to try and escort his team out. Sionjin's actually hiding on the right hand side here. He's got the angle for Zero. Zero blinks through. Will be forced out. <laughs> pulse bomb there to try and cover him. He will be okay. Admiral takes a lot of damage. He's going to burn to death, actually. Rocket will finish that one. And now they are all on point with this rally. Seeker needs a pick. They need a bit of a miracle. Zero hits for Pulse bomb, but the lamp is still there. No follow-up onto him either. And Rocket's now going to keep his eyes on this, Ziva, on this tracer behind him. Ariel's forced to touch point. Renko will fall. Main source of healing gone. Nowhere for Ariel to go. The Venture is back. Seeker's trying to make the Venture plays. But he won't be able to get it. And TSM, a crucial third round, tied up one to one. This map to decide it all. And they put up a two minute, five second time bank on Route 66. Don't think you can ask for a lot more of that. FMCL, on the other hand, it feels like originally they were expecting to play maybe just a, more of a straight up Lucio mirror. They've seemed a little bit unsure what they want to play into this bat brig composition there's a couple of ways you can go i think if you want to play some sort of like ana type composition composition with winston it's quite reasonable i think the old cycle is gonna be very strong maybe that doesn't maybe it doesn't suit fmcl's strengths in the same way but if they just want to do like a lucio ram i think they could really run them over like it's a bit tricky on route 66 because there's a lot of high grounds and everything to factor in and uh, so you need to know how you want to take each point in terms of rotation to get yourself into that that position 
But I feel like that would suit him, and that would maybe be a bit more comfortable than this. But it feels they're going into a, a Bat Brig Sigma mirror now. Not something we've seen all that much of on Route 66. Not something they've necessarily excelled at so far either. A lot of problems on Parisio. Obviously, that was into dive, so a different matchup. Here in the mirror, I think certainly one thing that's true is Tracer's lives get a little bit harder. Into the BAP, into the Brig. We've seen Zero play a little bit of Genji. The option might be available for him here as well. Not really seen a lot of it from Rocket. Expect Rocket very much just to keep the Tracer locked in. Sionjin also want Ash, which can be quite effective in these comps. But Dynamite, very good value against a comp that likes to stand together and brawl together. We're going to try and come out low ground here initially. I've got a decent amount of can't push for free, but this is the easy bit. This was the easy bit for FMC. The difficult bit is what rotation do they do next? What's, what space do they try and take next? Ariel was coming through this left-hand side already and will actually get underneath. He's down to half health, but he's gotten his cart moving. Admiral was going to take a little bit of a step up, get underneath gas as well. Seeker and Renko still trying to keep these angles. Slowly but surely taking more and more space and forcing this cart. FMCL. TSM. Playing slow. Now they try and come out on his right-hand side. Rail onto Sionjin, but I don't think anyone can finish it. And Zero's actually looking for the opportunity here. He's going to get in behind. Not able to quite find that timing, though. Ariel's still poking from underneath. No ults just yet. Oh, Renko gets whipped back. Actually, Renko's in big trouble. Maple's going for whip. He's going for him, but it's actually Maple who gets booped off. Maple's going to die in the end. Maple... For you can see Maple screaming. He had Renko caught out with that whip shot. But he gets, he gets carried away and he's actually going to get punished for it. Now they try and turn behind and Seeker's going to get a one-for-one -one trade. Rocket gets that back and they're still stuck underneath, but the payload is moving. I see and Rocket above them now. Window going to be used as well. Ariel in big trouble. Matrix is his team out. Rock connects onto Ariel, but he's got the Mega. He will be okay. Pulse Bomb, no good from Rocket. And now a chance to push back here. Renko's got a window of his own. I see Matrix, is, Matrix and Lamp Force for that, though. Flux is really close. Pulse Bomb, no good from Zero. Both Flux is about to come through. Ice is going to have his slightly earlier. Looking for it. Dodges the rock. Might drop it inside. Just gets just gets for Sigma, but I think he should be okay. They're trying to double down onto this here. Rock, he's so low. Sionjin and CJ have pushed the other side at the same time. I think it was Maple and CJ, sorry, but the damage has been done. Nice play from Timeless Fair. They drop the Flux onto this. They force so much peel onto Ariel. And at the same time, a couple of people drop and just create this horrible, horrible pincer in the middle. And that's so hard to deal with. And now, all of a sudden, that was that was a hell of a long fight. FMCL are low on time. They've got Flux. They've got Rally. They've got Overclock. They've got the tools with which to do it. But they are low on time. They're going to try and swing out in this top area. Might just be a job for Seeker to open it out. And actually, the Bob comes out quite early. So, happy to walk away from that one initially. And now they might just go back the way they came. Oh, Ariel's got booped down. So this will slow him down. Are they going to drop to the low ground? Flux comes through here. Maple is caught. Pulse Bomb wants a Seeker. No. No lamp for him. They trade it for Maple, though. The lamp comes through now. Big problem here. But they still find two kills, ultimately. TSM Force all the way back now. They need to slow this down. Try and play their lives. Their team are coming back. Ariel's looking for Rocket. Rally over the top now from Admiral. Doesn't hit the bash on CJ, but forces him into a killable position either way. And this Rally should just put him over the top. The kill onto Maple. Obviously, Maple had Rally as well, but he was coming back from the respawn queue as he got hit by that Flux. And FMCL, with not a lot of time to spare at all, have captured first point. A long way to go still. A long way to go. We see Sionjin going over to Hanzo. The main reason you'd play Hanzo here instead of another hit scan is the ability to go up, use the wall climb essentially, to go up and down this high ground all the time. Incredibly valuable if you can hit enough arrows. Initially, yeah, Rocket just gets caught here actually before the fight starts, so it's going to be a lot of free push for FMCL. Ice is going to try and make his way to point here. He's just going to try and buy a bit of time. Admiral's going to drop on him now. Icy wants to come clear top, and Seeker's in a little bit of trouble. Renko's got him though. McCart will keep on moving. Ariel continuing to hold his high ground. He has to deal with a lot of people above him, though. Ariel doesn't quite have flux, so no great tools, but it's going to be Seeker to start it. 
Gets a window as well, but he's got no one to look at. Oh, there we go. Finds the jump shot onto Sionjin. Now they have player advantage. It cost them two ults, so they've still got a long way to go. But if they can catch Icy here, but oh, Icy dodges it. Now a window on high ground from CJ. The Seeker's not scared. He's still trying to get some of this rail up. Rally used by Mateball to try and stabilize. Seeker can knock it out. Mateball is brawling on point, but he needs more help. Rockets behind the other side. Can't land the pulse bomb. Icy and Mateball come in. Flux comes out. Doesn't get anything, though. Ariel has the high ground, but can't connect for Flux. Now TSM have a numbers advantage. Sionjin is back. He's got it onto Renko. Oh, the, the rally's popped. Admiral's trying to clutch. He manages to stabilize. He can't keep Zero up, though. Seeker's going to be back soon. It's still a brawly fight. Bash onto Sionjin. He's low. He does get pocketed through, but they lose Rocket in the meantime. Now Ariel and Admiral walking through. Sionjin on the high ground. Seeker needs help. Admiral's still trying to get a few meters, but Icy returning will slow everything down again. Sionjin's about to have this dragon. CJ's actually a little bit low there. Does get onto the high ground. Zero is pressuring point. Rocket's there to meet him now. And Ariel just wants to help Zero on point here. Focusing through. But Renko's kind of in the middle. Has to be careful. Zero's ready to blink onto the high ground. But they have no great tool to clear CJ or Sionjin off here. He's going to drop the dragon through. Split Seeker off. But I think Seeker is okay. We'll slide back to the team now. Still all this high ground control here. They're just trying to play underneath him here. But Timeless have got him in a chokehold. No window, no flux just yet for FMCL. And it's actually going to be CJ who has this first ult. Who might just be able to drop it on him as soon as he gets it. Slowed it down massively here, FMCL. 20 seconds left on the clock. This will be last fight. We're going to make a move now. CJ looking for his opportunity. Harassing Admiral behind. Sionjin now has the complete angle here. And they've actually tried to flip the map a little bit here. They tried to flip the map. Icy is in trouble. Need to get him out. But Sionjin actually finds the first kill. There's the window. CJ with the window back. Pressure onto Ariel. But he does now have Flux. Trying to pocket them out here. But the cart is moving away. Ariel has this Flux soon. CJ's going to try and make his way out. Rally comes through from Admiral as well. Can they keep Ariel alive? They're trying to come out in this choke. Bomb is coming out. Though Seeker's in trouble. Seeker can't escape the bomb. They die through the rally anyway. Icy gets for Remark and TSM are good for the hold. Good for the hold. Zero can get one more touch. He's got a pulse bomb. But he also needs to kill four people. And it just felt like we got to a certain point in the map. We got to a certain... It just felt like we got to a certain point of the map where... FMCL didn't have a solution to the hold. Maybe you can make the same argument for Parisio first attack, where it didn't feel like FMCL's solution for how do we take this ever really worked. And I think that's a problem, obviously, especially on some of these maps like Parisio, Route 66. I mean, it's true on a lot of the hybrid and escort maps. They're quite technical maps. Some of these points are not inherently easy to take or swing out from, so you need a good plan. You maybe need a good backup plan. And it's felt that's where really where uh, FMCL fell down. Even though overall, I think it must be said that we actually saw a pretty good performance from Seeker. Definitely carried on Nepal. Found all the crucial picks. A bit quieter in the later series, but also his whole team was struggling as well. I think maybe, and this will maybe upset Korean Uncoachable, but CJ was actually probably one of the strongest performers. Played really well on Anna. Lots of good performances on BAP as well. So, <laughs> I think honestly, player of a match, player of a match for CJ, I think seems super reasonable. I think Maple continues to look pretty solid. Maybe that one mistake on Route 66 towards the end where he got caught, but overall pretty reasonable. I think we saw a few, a few soft deaths from Admiral at certain points, probably mainly on Brig more than Lucio. Um, obviously, Lucio always going to be the go-to hero for Admiral. Um, Ariel, I think, looked better maybe outside for Winston, but again, we can put it in the expected category. I think overall, we can maybe take a look at some of the stats here if I, if I can bring them up. I don't know if we'll gain too many too many great insights here. But we're going to look at the scoreboard. We can see damage. This is Nepal, obviously. You can see Seeker going 19-2 and two initially on that, which is, uh, you know, reasonable. <laughs> reasonable. Um, pretty dominant overall on that one. Round two was obviously Parisio. So no surprise here that we actually see a big swing the other way where people like Chopper and... Uh, Riker are actually going. I don't think you quite see Riker at the bottom here, but he's actually he's twenty three and two. It's really it's really quite reasonable. Um, and round three, maybe one of the more even ones. Both playing the mirror in this one, and I think uh, again, Sionjin doing quite a lot, CJ doing doing quite a lot comparatively as well. I think to Renko, especially if you look at these damage numbers, maybe between like CJ when they both be played BAP. I think both. 
when we see Renko on 4k damage, CJ on 10k damage, that's that's a gap, you know, that's a gap. Obviously, the team was more successful as well. CJ actually went 31 and 1 on that Route 66 as well. So, yeah, yeah, it seems really so. You combine that, you combine that with all the, the nades and the, the sleeps and everything he hit on Parisio. I think more than happy to give CJ player of the match here, I think. A really crucial ingredient for TSM. And interested to see him being able to win on a few different compositions here. If anything, maybe the weakest actually looked their Lucio Brawl mirror, if anything. But. I think a very useful tool that TSM have shown they can sort of draft their way around teams. They can win dive maps. They can win bat brig maps. Um, gives them a lot of options going forward. And I think especially once we get to these more tight games where you've been playing against a lot of these even teams like playing against FMCL or playing against a Citrus Nation or a Luminosity or a Students of a Game or whoever it is, being, have, having this wider pool of maps you can lean on probably going to be a huge factor for them. So ultimately, probably one of the better series we saw. Competitive, close, back and forth different comps on each map and i think tsm deserved winners and i think cj very much deserved player of the match thank you for watching obviously stay tuned to the channel for more face it action we'll be continuing to keep our coverage coming all throughout next week and all throughout this entire round robin